So pipeline is basically a mechanism for connecting the output of one program directly, conveniently into the input of another program so that you can do, in effect, two stages of processing just by saying program one, vertical bar, that's the pipeline symbol, second program. And what that does is to start both programs and take the output quietly from the first one and stick it into the input of the second one. And then, of course, you can have multiple of those. Before that, the way that people connected programs, well, first, I think they often didn't think of connecting programs at all. You thought of each program as its own thing, and it would produce some output. So, then, you, so you might put a few numbers into it via punch card or whatever. It would sort them. You'd take the output and then take that and one, literally sneak in that, wander on, put that into the next program. Right. Yeah. yeah. You'd do that as it were manually. I mean, Unix had the idea of file redirection, which made that syntactically easy. But the new invention was to say, hey, wait a minute, we could put an operator to do that right in the shell, the command, in, in command line interpreter. And then that made it a lot easier to do. And it also encouraged people to, if the mechanism wasn't clean already, retrofit cleanliness into the implementation. I think it is a new idea with Unix, as far as I know. Um, I have somewhere in my collection of historical documents a, a page that Doug McElroy wrote in 1964 saying what we want to do is a mechanism for screwing programs to connecting programs together just like screwing pieces of garden hose together and that's the model and then I think it was probably three or four years later and I don't know how it came about but it it just got done and literally in a very very short period of time so basically the pipe is a pipe because you'd expect piping water into a garden or yeah, and you just screw on another length of garden hose if you want to do further processing. A garden hose doesn't process in that same sense, but it's a pipeline in the sense that you see in certain kinds of manufacturing processes or something like that, where there's just stages of processing. And what's the benefit of that, rather than writing one big massive program that just does everything for you? Well, first, you don't have to write the one big massive program. You've got existing smaller programs that may already do parts of the job, and having smaller programs is better than having massive programs. So that's one thing. Another is that it's possible that the amount of data you're processing would not fit if you stored it in a file. If you took the output of one program and had to store it totally before you put it into the next program, it might not fit. Because remember, we're back in the days when disks on these things had, if you were lucky, a megabyte or two of data. Not a gigabyte or a terabyte, but a megabyte. And so you couldn't instantiate necessarily the output of a program before passing it on to the next program. So the pipeline never had to instantiate the whole output. So, it, so by instantiate, that's store, is it? Like yeah, start. Yeah, big word for storing. And um, so that meant that you could kind of just sneak things through without having to do this along the way. So that would be another example. And then it was just keeping track of the intermediate files could be a nuisance, cleaning up the mess afterwards. All of those things went away with the pipeline mechanism where you just said, hey, this is what I want to do, this, 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 in order. And give me one result at the end of it. Give me one result at the end of it. And is that something that's still used today in programs and systems? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, it's still fundamental mechanism. And you use it all the time. You don't even think about it at this point. It's just part of it. It took a while to get retrofitted, I think, into, let's say, Windows but it's an absolutely integral part of any Unix-based system. It has been since, you know, since the late 60s. Just by taking existing programs, tools like grep and wc and sort, and somewhere in there I could throw in awk so if I wanted to do a slightly more complicated kind of processing. So all of these things are using Unix tools with glued together in pipelines in ways that were not thought of in the original design. And that's the critical observation. And that's the reason why these little programs are often much more useful than the hum very big monolithic one, which does whatever it does, but nothing else. It's definitely an instance of don't reinvent the wheel. Other people have done a lot of useful things for you. And, and the ingenuity, and, and often a lot of fun, of just saying, hey, I don't have to do anything here except glue together things that somebody else did for me already. I might be getting the wrong end of the stick or another cliche I'll come to in a minute, but is this where libraries come from? Then? So you could think of programs like grep and wc and sort as in effect libraries, but libraries of programs that stand alone rather than libraries of code which is linked more or less permanently with other pieces of code. So it's it's a library mechanism, but in some ways at a higher level. And the programs are really independent of each other. 
Law number one, a robot may not injure a human being or, through an action, allow a human being to come to harm. Law number two, a robot must obey orders given it by human beings except where such...